has everything. Bumping in, banging. <laughs> Big boy Big neighborhood. Boy. All right, you good in the headphones, chains? I'm good. I'm we got good. two chains up two in here, man. Really, we got we got Trappy up in here. I love, I love That's Trappy. Right. Man, I'm he so just <laughs> he just came in with his little one, man, yeah. by the name of Trappy, oh and Trappy getting all the attention up in yes, here, he man. <laughs> Trappy, Trappy is the uh, is the infamous uh, French bulldog that is everywhere with me. He's in he's in first class As with me. He, damn. He, he, he's in. You know, he heard he heard Yeezy album before you heard it. <laughs> Right, wow. you know, and it's crazy because he just took his Yeezys off when he stepped yeah, in here. Man, you know what I'm hey man, but I was just telling him off air. I said, man, <laughs> Trappy looked like his owner has money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he has his heir to him. You know what oh, I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, he's blue fun. The mm. color is a blue fun. Is that what the color is? Yeah, it's a blue fun. It's a great past the gray poupon. Okay, blue fun. <laughs> blue fun. <laughs> blue fun. <laughs> hey man, now where do you get? Because you know how there's some there's some where I'd be like, man. That doggy owner is such and such. Yeah. And that doggy is already like blessed with the inheritance of, mm -hmm. of the hard work you guys are doing. Yeah. How did you That's pick up Trappy? Well, you know, I do this show called The Most Expensive Ooh, with GQ, man. which I'm actually shooting the third season. Just go ahead, man. Out here. And so, um, was he on The Most Expensive? His, 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 shit. Da his daddy was. Oh. So his daddy, like, um, makes 300000 a year having. Pups. Oh, hello. Yeah, man. Baller genetics. Hello. So I did my little mouth, figured out your 300000 just for you being a beautiful dog and you just having a business. And then I'm going to put that, I'm going to mix that with the two chain aspect. As it should mm. be. And, <laughs> and, I, and I like dogs. I grew up around, you know, animals. I'm from the South. We had, yeah. you know, pets and stuff like that. So, you know, Trappy became like really like one of my homies, like one of my road dogs. We ride around. So is he from that bloodline? <laughs> He's from that's his man. Oh, the, the boy, the boy having bro. the boy, his name is Micro. Uh -huh. His daddy, Micro, he has a uh he has a, a lit probably once every three months to where people approach him with a significant amount of cash to get some of his blood, and then he Obviously gets the dog pregnant, and then he actually gets to pick a lit from the, pick something from. The, so it's oh, it's a it's, my a, it's God. it's a great business. Hey man, so. we're not even thinking on that kind of level. You know yeah, how, yeah. how how cats be like, man, I got to start this t shirt company. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But and then with like that, you thinking on a whole different level too, yeah, though. Yeah, I mean, it, and then it's interesting with breeding and, and things like that when you get you know you mix two different temperaments together and you get a certain you know. For me, it's it's interesting. I, it's like. Not to compare animals with humans, but it's a strong, you know, it's a strong correlation. Right. When you like when you have kids and stuff like that, like man, you had like your, you had like your daddy, you look like your mama. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? You have these features or these traits, and it's, it's the same thing with animals. Hey man, yeah, you could tell he got a he got a whole different kind of walk on him too. <laughs> yeah, man. Like like he, he know scroll. where he coming from, and he know <laughs> who he with. Man, he got that Beverly Hills blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he do, man. <laughs> First off, we got to say, man, just welcome back to the neighborhood, yeah, man. brother. Man, it feels and, good to be back. And you've been working, too, though, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when it came really to change time, did you get a chance where you did get kind of a break? Well, I was able to get a break. But what um, is a break to yeah, you? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a break because I still I still um, kept my same habits as far as going to work every night. Yeah, man. As far as pulling out a project, I think the whole game shifted overnight. Mm -hmm. It went from being um, a kind of like pre-promo thing where you set up an album, you do your run. It can't, you know, they used to come out on Tuesdays. I don't know if y'all remember. Yeah, yeah, man. This is yeah. just like the other day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then now they come out on Friday. Yeah. Um, and, and then you have all these streaming platforms. That's different because you can't actually get the physical CD. But the album I just dropped, Kali Grove. Hello. We didn't even have physical CDs. They don't come out. Still to another like another week or something like that, and I know how to press up CDs. Like, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I I was asking Dev Jam like, well, I can do that. Why does it take so long to do it? You know, I mean, we can't get no CDs. Yeah, you know. So, but that's, that's where we're going. Like the, the MacBook, the MacBook that I just bought doesn't have a place where you can put a CD. Yeah, you can't even put nothing mm -hmm. in and yeah, burn anymore. You know, you know the, the next car that you buy, you won't be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? So everything is just, it's a paradigm. Everything is just shifting, and as an artist. That's stuck in the middle that you got to know how to react, got to know how to move. Um, I think hip hop is very much about taking chances right now. Um, definitely expressing yourself is the most expressive time I've ever seen a, in hip hop. Period. I think it got a lot to do with everybody expressing themselves. Everybody from 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 Trump to everybody else. They just mm -hmm. don't and people don't care. You know, it's, it's just I think reality TV just made everybody yeah, man. just like you know what I'm saying. Took yeah. That. 
It, it, we we play like the gloves are off, but they really on because sometimes, man, you'll say something and you're like, man, I thought we could say this. Or we, we still super sensitive on a lot of stuff too, though. I think we I think we just um, breaking boundaries as we go, man. I think when people say it, they say it and they put it out there and they move on. I mean, we uh, it, it feels it's really a great time to be alive, man. I to heard really that. witness all of this stuff that's going on, to be a part of all this stuff that's going on. Are you on. saying that because you're two chains? Um, I'm saying it for okay, anybody just, that's just, alive. Yeah, yeah man. Okay, well, I mean, you know the, I fact, the, the fact that you're alive is a blessing. Exactly. Period. You know what I'm saying? Because what people don't realize is somebody's going to always be doing better than you, and someone's always going to be doing worse. Yes, I don't sir. care. If, even if you're like maybe homeless, like in, it's somebody that's even worse. Go to Africa. It's a different kind of homeless in certain parts of Africa. Right. So I always look at it like as long as you're in the middle, you know what I'm saying, kind of hanging on, trying to be the whatever at the very top just know that somebody's gonna be on top of that but you still should have expectations you still shouldn't be complacent or anything like that but my mentality is to know that you know whatever you're going through somebody going through it way worse than you how did you take like as far as two chains because two chains now is a brand like we seeing two chains pop up places now that mm -hmm. it's like okay well boom that's two chains as a, mm -hmm. as opposed to Rapper two chains or such and such, you know what yeah, I'm saying? It's just yeah. boom, two chains, and that's a brand. How did you make sure that you navigated two chains where it wasn't just the intro of who you are, but just that name? It's a brand now. Uh, I think I had a learning curve, you know, coming up on the Luda, um, being able to watch the game. Like I actually studied the game. I still do. Yeah, yeah. I think you can learn something every day. So for me, it's important to create multiple streams of revenue outside of music. Because you can do music your whole life. You got you got bands, rock bands. You have, you know, Mays and Frankie Beverly. I just sent my mom to see those guys. <laughs> you know, people still know how to get money out here. You have old hip-hop concerts and all that's true. And I, I feel like I've made records that even though I'm not going to start right now, that if I did start right now, I could still catch me a tour 10, 20 right. years from now, pick up me a bag. Right. But – to say that that's all I'm going to do with the life that I have is is just ridiculous for me. You know what I'm saying? I've been around a lot of people who came, left, whether still living or deceased, and it makes me want to maximize my time here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It makes me want to maximize my skill set. It makes me want to um, challenge myself. You dig? I've, I've been blessed to do a lot of things, man. I've done everything from playing AAU basketball to being on the BET, MTV, whatever awards you want, AAU, BT. Mm -hmm. I, had, I used to be on EBT. Right. I, did, <laughs> yeah. I did all that, man. I did all that. Man, Kali Grove. That's right. Now, how do we get two superstars and then yeah, man. to come together and say, you know, because now it's like, it, it don't seem like it's labels, this, that, and the other. Just like, man, okay, let, let's go do it. How yeah. does that come together with you and Lil Wayne? Well, first, you know, that's like my my a real, you know, friend in a game where it's not really, you know, friendships. That's solid. So I can say that about him. I can say he's a real brother type to mm -hmm. me. I can say that about him. I've known him for close to 15 years, over a decade. And he's one of my favorite rappers. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And so for me to sit back and, like I say, study the game and see where the game is going, where you get a lot of the youth that pop up and feel like they started a wave or something like that when, you know, I, I can see genetic influence from rappers like, you know, Lil Wheezy, you know what I'm saying? Even myself or whoever, <clears throat> excuse me, that came before us, you know, our Snoops, our West Coast influences or whatever. So it was important for me to um, acknowledge the fact that let's be clear now, Wayne shifted the culture a little yes, bit. Sir. Let's just be clear now. Yes, like, sir. You can be, everybody can play crazy. I'm down with that too. But let's just be clear, you know, like, you know, let's just be clear, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was a, a hairstyle, tattoos, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you claim, whatever you bang, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Home, you know, so for me, this album is like a dedication. It's called Collie Grove because I'm from College Park. Right, that's right, in right. Georgia, Atlanta. He's from Holly Grove, which is New Orleans. You know, Collie Grove, that's the, that's the gumbo. That's the combination. But you know what, Two Chains, man? You hear all the time cats say, man, we need to do something. We need to mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you know, you got two cats that's working extremely well that could do very well without, you know, mm -hmm. without coming together. How did you guys say, man, we gonna really, we going to really do it? I think it started getting interesting over time. We started recording records, and they started being dope. We started yeah, being man. like, man, we need to. You know, I remember Wayne telling me, like, man, this this going to feed our family, too. Like, this this is hard. You know, like, I remember we've been working on a project for, like, a year, you know, just doing records. And then, son, we were like, man, we need it. Yeah, we got you know? it. And then I know I was like, you know, I was trying to 
make it come to fruition. I was like, I feel like I can, you know, I can really make this work because I feel like I can do anything I put my mind to. Mm-hmm. You know, so where do you go from at at one point? Change is being everybody wanted to get you, and mm-hmm. you and it was like you were the assist leader. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and then when do you start to say, like, man, I gotta, I gotta pull back just a little bit. There was a few records that came out that I didn't get on that I was asked to get on when I felt like it was a time where, you know, it was a time where it wasn't no mustard beats without me on them. Mm. Like a man was like, you get a mustard and a chain. Right. And we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I started being like, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, me and mustard started to have a great rapport together. We did um, different. That was my, you know, that was my first. I went platinum before, but like I went platinum with records that had features on them. Like No Lie that had Drake on mm. it. Um, the birthday song had Ye on it. So for me, um, and like other artists out there who look in the mirror and whether they want to swallow it or not, I realized that it wasn't all the way me that made these records go platinum. Mm. I couldn't take the credit for that. But when I'm different went platinum, it's like Mustard did the beat, I did the verses. That's you. That's it. A million people bought into that. I'm, I feel very successful about myself. No Amen. one helped me, you know. Yeah, How crazy is it to have a platinum <laughs> or when we're in an era of people not buying records? Yeah, I mean, you watch out. Saying? Watch out just went gold, you know, the, and I, that was on a mixtape. So it's just. Do you feel like people are starting to, with the streaming, that uh, people are are starting to purchase again a little bit? Because at one point, Chains, we were having number one albums that was selling 40,000, 50,000, yeah, I mean, as yeah, opposed man. to sometimes they were selling a million they first no, week out. I mean, it's like that now because. I, the, even the labels don't know how to keep up with the titles and the Spotify and the Apple because streamers is and streaming is pennies on a dollar, people. What happens is you get a streaming service, you like uh, my album, Weekend's album, Bryson Triller, Tiller's album, Kendra's album, whoever album you like, you listen to it in the shower, boom. And but you you just like listen to it. It didn't really count as you buying the record. Mm. It just counted for like it came up to like you know ten cents for the uh, us artists or something like that. Or it didn't even count. For like a, a unit moved instead of you like going um, going to a store or going to iTunes buying and it. buying it for nine ninety nine with the streams with the streaming services is you get you know all these songs for that same price and why would I have to buy when I can get this to, oh you know it's just different so it's gonna affect the numbers are gonna affect be affected drastically now anyway because even if I'm listening to it it's not counting as a purchase which is almost crazy you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but that's just where they set up this package. Moving on to the future. And this is happening right like today, yesterday. It's happening right now. So don't nobody really know how to react to it. And you got to make sure that you kind of become a brand. Because back in the days, it was like you were eating off royalties. It was sale. You know, like you don't like cats ain't really eating off of sales. No, you have to be an entertainer. I don't care. That's that's day one. That's from back in to now. You have to be an entertainer. You have to. People have to want to see. People have to want to pay to see you perform, entertain, come to a bar mitzvah party, whatever it is. You have to be somebody that's entertaining. How you can much, have solid raps, all of that. But how yeah. much is this two chains? Like like how like how how much is it a plan to like, okay, my hair gotta be a certain way. The be, the, the gla- like how, how much of this is like it just it's planned spontaneity as well. Um I'm very transparent, man. Believe it or not, I'm very okay Because have you ever stuff. seen somebody, like, we'll see somebody, we're like, man, look at this 2 chains looking motherfucker. Yeah, they trying too hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can see but that. But there's a look now mm-hmm. that that says 2 chains. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's me. I'm, it's one thing about me and one thing with anybody, you have to be comfortable in your own skin first for it to be received by everybody else. Mm-hmm. You got to just take the flaws, take whatever, you know what I mean? Nowadays, you can fix your flaws. You can go to, around the corner. Here I am. Set it off. (laughs) Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? So, but you got to try to, whatever it is you need to do to to love yourself a little bit more. You dig what I'm saying? So for me, you know, it, for me, it's crazy because like my kids make me love myself more because it goes back to seeing some of yourself in them. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, kids make you laugh all day. Whatever it is, just attitude, walk, body language, especially when they don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? And then like for me, I have, my older cousin around who can tell stories about when I was doing some of the same things and, and stuff like that. So I'm I'm so down or I'm down earth, but I know I'm a superstar. I know where I come from. I know you know what I'm saying. I know my passport. I know I need another passport. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I know it's jacked Is up. Is that from stamps? Saying? Yeah, mine tatted up. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so so be. you know, like on the real, like and then like you know, I'm on some humble stuff now. I know people can hear it in my voice. I lost 
I lost too many, I lost so many homeboys yeah, already man. this year. It's, it's crazy for me. You know, like homeboys, I talk to them and then like I don't see them 15 minutes later. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I just trying to walk different. Like, you know, some of my boys like, man, you used to be so cocky, man. I ain't messing with the, the new, like, you know what I mean? Like I'm, even though I'm the new guy, I'm still having my check still right. You know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. I'm still looking like it, moving like Hell it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a little bit more prayed up. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit more careful with my steps. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My whole thing is when I leave the crib, I want to come back. Eventually. That's what I say, man. You know what I'm saying? I Imagine say, I going to the, to the club and then like getting like. God forbid, like getting killed in a club, like going somewhere like that and just leaving everything like you left it, the iron and board, yeah, up, you know, whatever you did, the clothes, or the shoe, just leaving. I think too much, you know. So I'm thinking like that, like you know, I'm just leaving, you know, whatever it is, this jury, I just check out, whatever it is, like you know, what I'm saying, dude, go back to my hotel room right now, you know, what I'm saying, it's looking like it's looking like a tornado in there, it's, you know, it's, it's stuff every, you know, so it's important for me to, you know, what I'm saying, any. What I preach to any young black male, any young male, period, any youth, period, just try to get back home. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Man. And it's, I know this pride is really killing all of us. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, dude might put this on IG. He might he might post this ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? I right, can't go right, for that. Right, 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 right. I can't go for that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what we need to do. We might need to have these, um, what you call them? Um, the uh the fake what we be doing we go through the little the like the paintball stuff paintball hello oh, we get, might, need get some, out? Might, might need to get some people to really like cause they got some high power paintball joints you know what I'm saying <laughs> and put a gotcha. hole yeah but just really have a shootout you and your folks you know what I'm saying we go set up I might set up I got right. some land in Georgia and then just I go might put a huge yeah, yeah, man. go count the paint the count man, the hits yeah. like man all right let, let this and go let the boys come up and look do it with no equipment on go out there and feel cause Ooh. them things get. Ouch. No equipment. But it's better than you like not making it. But then you'll be like, man, I'm glad yeah. I didn't catch the hot one. That's but, true. You know but what I'm saying? You know what? You still might want to fight out of that, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Be hot. We're going to figure hot. it out. we just throwing stuff up against yeah. the wall right <laughs> Those now. Those are ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going we gonna to figure bank, it out. We got we have good ideas. Rest in peace, Bank Roll Fresh. That's my homie, man. Yeah, if man. you don't know, you know what I'm saying? That's one of Atlanta's legends. You know what I'm saying? Authentic trap rap, street money, my player partner. I had to say that. Most expensive is shit. <laughs> yeah. Man. Now, now, this is what I'm talking about when I say the brand, 2 chains. You know what I'm saying? And just watching that, watch, watch just kind of following some of the most expensive is shit. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised by how expensive some of the day-to-day -day uh -huh. stuff could be and that there is a market for like a $295 cheeseburger? Crazy. It Did it, it taste it different? It well, it tastes different to me anyway because I hadn't ate beef or pork in so many years. Oh. And, and like, and like, I can't even tell you. You really bit into the burger though. But I really, I really did because, I mean, what? The, okay, the whole thing about the show is, is obviously, uh, you know, me being surprised that this stuff costs this much money. But after hearing, you know, um, Kobe beef been in the cage for so many years and. This exotic cheese with this, you know, with real gold. I didn't even yeah, know you can yeah, eat gold. Yeah, I just, I'm just rocking gold. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just looking gold. I'm saying, I got on gold. I'm eating I'm gold. Has eating caviar. Necklace right now, Jack. You know, it has caviar. So I'm like, you know what? And so, you know, when I get to the set, they tell me they didn't even want to start fixing the burger till I got there. They wanted to be hot. You know what I'm saying? Fresh. So I'm like, man, I don't even know how to tell these people. You know what I'm saying? I eat turkey. You know what I'm saying? So they start cooking it. When they first started cooking, I was like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't like the smell. How long had it been since you're not eating beef? Man, I hadn't ate beef probably, honestly, bro. I'm going to be so honest with you. Let me see the last thing I had. Um, we used to have a Wendy's down the street from my apartment complex. You know what I'm saying? Man, as well as the Mac. How long has it been since you it was in the complex? It was, it was in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. It was in the 90s. A long time ago. It was in the 90s, fam. It was in the 90s, fam. So. It was in the 90s, fam. I, I hadn't ate pork. I had never ate pork that I knew about. I ate some bacon bits, and and I knew it after I ate it. And then there was some other product that I ate that I knew had pork in it. But I didn't even my see my dad. First well, you of all, hadn't eaten nothing consciously. My dad told the school, and I didn't even know this. You know what I'm saying? Before he, my, he first of all, he named me Tahi, which means you know unity with God, one with Allah. So he told the school that I I was allergic to pork. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I started going to school, they never fed me pork all the way up. So that's all that I knew that I was allergic to pork. When my daddy got out of prison, I made him come stay home with me. This is like 06, 07. I made him come stay at my house. You know what I'm saying? I'm asleep. 
And it's like, man, I smell no, the I smell the no, worst thing I've ever smelled no. in my life. Man, this man is cooking strips of bacon. It's wild. <laughs> I've never seen strips of bacon this wide, man. I almost threw up every... Wow. I cannot believe that he... And I was like, Pop, man, what you doing cooking that bacon? Man, so he's like, what you talking about, boy? This, this pork bacon good. <laughs> right. It's that Steve Harvey bacon. It's pork bacon good. And I said, I said, man, I don't eat... You talking about eating no pork? Man, turkey ain't got no bacon. He go telling me that. And then, like, I left it alone. Uh, I still never, like, I still never indulged in anything like that. So, for me, beef was something that I just got myself off. Off of, you know what I'm saying? And even to this day, you know, I'm on a... I'm on a so know. are we talking wow. at least 10 years? Oh, yeah, more than 10 years, man. Damn. More, than, Damn. more than 10 years. I don't eat pepperoni. I don't do nothing. Like, you know, some people, I don't eat this and then still eat a, you know, burger, pizza, whatever right. it is. I don't, <laughs> I don't play them games. So oh, wow, so, so why did you eat the burger? Was it just the experience? Well, it was an experience. I bit out of it one time, and then I said, Damn. I said this mug. <laughs> I said this mug. Good. Dude, but what so part of it was bro, a three hundred dollar burger? I ate, or I, ate, you? I ate like three bites, honestly, bro. Then they cut it right, and then the film crew, like one of the dudes, he put his hand on the burger. Oh, I said, you, you, like, like, you know that. I said, you know that's your burger. Yeah, you know that? yeah. It's yours now. You know that's your burger. You know right? you owe me one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know that's your burger. And he was like, what? They looked around. Man, it was like six of them, man. They was eating like like carnivals or something. Yeah. They eating like, like it was yeah. some kind of roadkill or something. Wow. Yeah, so I didn't eat the whole thing. I did eat it, man. I can honestly say I ate a $300 hamburger. Yeah. Did yeah. it make you sick? It didn't make me sick either. We I smoke, I went to smoke and ride there, though. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what a smoker do to try to get that stomach caught. You, you supposed to. Hey, man, roll up. You know what I'm saying? Do you, as as that, do you eat beef now again? No, or, no, no. Or no, no. I haven't, that was the last time. I, you know, it's, it's, so I, I can say in the last 20 years I ate you know, beef once. I can oh. say that. And it's documented. Yeah, and, and it's, it's on, yeah. It's, and on it's, the, and it's on the internet. Yeah, yeah. man. Two chains. I saw you in the trailer for Organized Noise documentary coming up. Oh. Did they have influence impact on your career? Oh, oh, I did that a long time ago. They about to drop that? It, they're gonna drop it today, I believe. Actually, wow. I, I'm, I, I came from that cloth. Like that's a real strong um, cloth to be from in Atlanta. They are very influential. Mm -hmm. They definitely set the bar. They moved the culture. Um, CeeLo Green. Mm. You know, Andre Benjamin, you know, organized noise themselves, whether it's Outkast, Goody Mob, the whole team, the production team, Rico. I actually had them working on my solo. I'm dropping another album this year. So I, I had them doing some curating as far as listening to it and things early on. Um, I don't know what much to say. Like, if it weren't for them, it wouldn't be a lot of stuff going on in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They really kind of. Because Atlanta was real, like, bass music -y, booty shaky before. I like that too, though. I do too, yeah. but like, but what happened Good was times. Outkast they figured out a way to rap over those same mm -hmm. beats, you know, like, and so it made it very much, you know, possible to like, man, we can actually put some wordplay behind it. some of the same stuff that makes us, sh and we implement that to this day. You know, you come to Atlanta, you be bouncing up and down, but somebody actually be trying to rap or say something, you know, or maybe they shifting away from it now, but that's. That's kind of where the origin came from. Uh, CEO. Uh -oh. You know what I'm saying? And CEO for real, though. Nah, for real. You know what I'm saying? How does that part of the business come together, man, where you like, all right, CEO, I'm really CEO for real? Well, um, with the merch and everything that I'm doing now with uh, with, with, with the clothing and apparel, it obviously catapulted this past Christmas. And you've been a fashionable cat too, mm -hmm. though. Oh, yeah. I do yeah my, I'm, you you know, make other people clothes on, look man. well, so Come you on, might man. as well. You, you know, know what and I'm saying? And I just figured out, you know, I used to get mad at rappers, but it ain't your fault. Rapper, it ain't your fault. It's your stylist's fault. Your stylist looking at me. <laughs> that's what I, it took me a minute, because, right. see, <laughs> you know, they felt like, you know, that's such and such style. I'm like, I get it. So they stylist laying on me, they ain't going to remixing it. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. You Dropping ever say it in the imitation pot. is the best form of flattery, but I, don't flatter I, me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, today, though, today somebody will take your little style or your swag, and then if you try to do it, you'll look like you're a body. Right. I don't know how that happened. Right. Well, oh, you trying to oh, you trying to look like such a change looking like that's the whole thing. He trying to look like bro with the two chains on. <laughs> like two chains trying to run two chain now, like, man, this deep. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, that's just a part of the you culture. You just brought up the dabbing sweater, mm -hmm. bro. Do dabbing you Santa. know that the dabbing Santa was going to take off the way it took off? No, I mean, honestly, bro, if y'all knew how much I missed with merch, like didn't make a nickel, okay. then y'all should be like, you know, God gave me one. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, because I've been trying to do my own little shirts and stuff like that, like on tour. 
You know what I'm saying? Get some merch going. Leave with sixty dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Leave on the venue more than you like. I ain't even broke even off this damn. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out like, cause fan t-shirts are fan t. You gotta like it's a way. Like some people have mastered it, bro, and some people have not. You know what I'm saying? And it's like no gray area. You either popping. Oh, you right. ain't popping. I'm terrible. I'm, that's how this movie. Change, you ever leaving the venue and you see the dudes outside selling shirts for with $5? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you want to, it's like a boot, it's like bootleg CDs. You want to knock the table mm-hmm. over. <laughs> like, man, are you serious? Yeah, man. So the, the dabbing sweater, whatever, it did, you know, well over two million, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which, wow. was, which was a blessing. So we kept, you know, designing stuff and I came up with the CEO thing, which means creating every opportunity, which is another clothing line, CEOmillionaires.com. Check it out. Um, I ain't gonna say I'm the owner or nothing like that, but I rock with it. Check yeah. it out. It's a it's a mind state brand. It's one of those brands, you know. Um, respectively, a lot of the females is, is carrying it because it's on some it it's on some boss. It's like a female just takes me like I want to do a photo shooting because really this brand is not just like rocking clothes. Like with CEO meetings, it's like you know what I'm saying I want to be my own boss. I want to um. You know, I want to be uncomfortable. I've been doing this for so long. I've been so complacent. It's like I want to go to the next step. Mm-hmm. I want to get past this glass ceiling. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a mindset. It's like a jersey for like a mindset. You know what I'm saying? So if you see that CEO on me or anybody you know, just know that they out here trying to make a look. I don't care if you're rocking it in a trap or a cubicle. <laughs> right, it's, right, a, right, right. It's, it's a mindset. You know what I'm saying? That really I'm trying to really have a trickle down to the youth, man. We got to have like a better future set up for us if we're going to be. We're going to be in some trouble. Hey, man, and you said the the youth a few times, bro. And, and and I got this thing where I just tell cats, like, what's right with hip-hop? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and even with your true foundation or just the things that, that, that you <laughs> do. And, and my thing is this, man. For everything that comes to light that we'll see, what are the things we don't see? You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah, just as simple right. as... Walking in like, oh, honey, I got that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Here goes such and such. Like, and, and you don't send out a tweet or on Instagram like, hey, right. buying this lady groceries right, right, right now, bro. How buying you... this lady groceries. Yeah, that's like, like the thing you did. That's like for, for your ego. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the True Foundation has been around maybe three or four years. We've done for families, communities, kids. I hold an annual basketball tournament at my old high school for for kids ten through thirteen, where I have Adidas send two hundred pair of shoes. I order trophies like six five. You know, I do things. Um, we have something going on in Atlanta right now called Kid Cello. Where I have the kids come out and perform mm. for an event. All this is true foundation things. And so recently I did some things really with giving some of the funds back from the dab and mm-hmm. sweater, sweater. And we just found some extreme cases and the media started getting hold to it. Right. So at first it was like, you know, like. Like every Christmas, I give you haul full of toys right. away in the neighborhood. Like no one Instagram, no one took a picture of. It. Like literally, like a you haul, pull up, pop out. Right. Like I might be twelve, and I'm. And just, that's you, and you know how you do that, man. God knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. What I'm you know so like I never. So I never. First. Man, listen, fam. I never, never tripped about to the point where people used to ask me, "So what are you doing in the neighbor? You know, what are you doing foundation? I used to forget. I used to be like, man, I'm just like I ain't doing nothing, you know. And so then we did a couple of things recently. For some people in need, a 11 family home, I bought my house. Mm-hmm. And some other thing, a veteran family that I did, um, a kid that was like 17, who was like the um, out of 18,000 people, he was picked like number eight for like a trombone player, player for Connie Gahal, but he, oh, could, wow. he couldn't get, get there. there. You know what I'm saying? He, all he needed was a way, young little black dude that couldn't afford to get there. And this huge opportunity mm-hmm. now, like, you know, and I remember I had opportunities and I, I still turned out pretty good, right? But I ain't have nobody to cover that, that slight for me. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like I couldn't save everybody. It's important. Like my phone started ringing. Everybody wanted the house. You know, even my family members. But it was more <laughs> of a, it was more of a need thing and a want, and then it mm-hmm. kind of was placed on my heart. Like I could just feel it when somebody. I could just feel it. Like, hey man, man, we were just having amazing, like a bro. round of tennis, man. Mm-hmm. Where it was just some of the things that you were talking about, like. Like remembering putting the extension cord to the neighbor's crib for oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying for yeah. electricity, so and we was in here like having a game of like, t- yep. tennis. Like damn, yep, like the the heater, like yep, yeah. you know you, what I'm saying. The oven, you got the oven open to heat man. the whole house. Everybody yes, standing in front man. of the oven, you know. It's like it's so many things. I mean, we had we Cold had the actual showers, tool. Like, we had the tool to turn the water, the water on back and off. on. Yeah, it's at five o'clock. We would we we would turn you know we would turn off the water all day till five. And they leave at five. We'll turn the water on until five in the morning. And go and, back and, out. And, and do the whole the water, the lights. I mean, Dude, I, knew I knew how to do the phone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I cable knew how to go was back. like, everybody could steal cable. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Easy. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, it's in like growing up in an apartment complex. That's kind of like how you helped each other. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, the lady down the hall has something you don't have. She lets you run an extension cord all the way down the hall, yeah, and 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 it and it actually wasn't embarrassing. Like Not telling at all, brother. Like, it's like, and you know, if this cord is running, that your electricity is obviously off or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And growing up with a single parent mom who didn't work that much, and basically, I hustled. To pay the bills. Like, everybody in the neighborhood called my mama mom. So you know what type of mom she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. When you got that mom there, so you can go over there. You can you can go over there, eat, smoke, sleep, trap, whatever you want to yeah. do at my mom's hey, crib. Mom. Yeah, that's just, how, <laughs> that's just how she was. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of that stuff... Um, I carry with me. You know what I'm saying? Like my kids don't every time they every time it's time to go to bed, they be like, I'm hungry. I was like, you know how many times I went to sleep hungry? You're yeah. gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. Trust me, you're gonna be perfect. You're gonna yeah. be good. All you gotta do is go Your to sleep. Your hungry is a whole different yeah, type of I mean, hungry. And I'm glad hungry. my kids don't have to know what my hungry was. I almost want them to though. Like right. I don't even know. What to do. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, Try this out. <laughs> man. I like, and I, was, I remember, man, I like like my kids don't know what a a syrup sandwich is, a oh, sugar man. sandwich. Like, you know, opening, opening the same refrigerator 10 times in two yeah, minutes. Like, like it's going to be magical. Yeah, and then just trying to figure out. But every time you open, you're trying to figure out to what ketchup. you can just mix and just, you know, like, okay, this is another thing. I'm lying about the pork. I didn't realize that pork and beans yeah. had pork in it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. But you know what thing is? If you took that one little piece of pork out, my brother man. thought he was good. Like, yeah, get the pork out of man. there. Man, so you know they, you know, so I'm going, I'm going to my grandma's house. They doing hot dogs and pork and beans. They doing the ground this and pork. So all this stuff and pork. And, so then I'm, you know, I'm getting old. I'm like, if it has pork in the title, right, right, right. Then I was eating pork. So yeah. let me, let me clarify. But that. man, I just want the and beans. Yes, <laughs> man. I just want the and beans. And beans. Just give me the and beans. But I remember that, bro, because oh I remember, gosh. I remember them saying, "Boy, shut up, you're gonna be wrong I'm like I ain't supposed to eat this stuff you know what I'm saying so, yeah, my I'm brother Keith he would it. specifically say hey take the pork out yeah you know what I'm saying like, right. like it didn't marinate in like there it's been sitting in it but yeah. do you think that that just that upbringing also man and the, cl- the cloth that I can mm. say that we're cut from does that make you appreciate and give you that will to continue to help other people because right now you can say man I got it all for myself uh, yeah, because no one came to my rescue. Even when I was an adult and needed some kind of guidance with music and everything, I felt like I couldn't. Like, but how does that not shut you off even more? Yeah. Like nobody helped me. Right. I was like that. I oh, just started okay. being like, I ain't gonna lie. I was I, that was my that was my mo- that was my motive for a minute. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, ain't nobody give me nothing. That was the thing. But when don't nobody give you nothing, you carry that. Like ain't nobody get me, especially when you become successful. But. It, it wasn't. It was like two wrongs didn't make a right. right. It was like two negatives didn't make it. You know what I'm saying? So. For me, like when I started doing some things and it started trickling down to the kids, and I remember like how we talking about some stuff when we were kids, how they gonna always remember how two chains popped up at their house, yeah, man, with a, with a truck full of furniture yes. and, and played football in their neighborhood and left, you know, and never mm-hmm. and just was on TV the next day, you know what I'm saying? And and so and did it for real though. But see, now it's about having a legacy because right. you're gonna leave here, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you want it to be like them. You wanted to be them smiles at the play. At the play. You wanted to be them good right. stories. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I'm sorry to even be talking like this. I'm not finna go nowhere no time soon, but just saying, like, having to go to these homegoing services and stuff like that, especially, you know, they're all spontaneous and stuff like that. It's just, it's just, you wanna have a legacy. You wanna leave something yeah, behind. Man. And you don't want to be looked at like a jerk or an asshole. And I always say this too, Chains, man. Like, character is what's being spoke about you when you're not in the room. That's right. That's you that barbershop. That's that barbershop talk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Not in the room, brother. Yeah. Two Chains, always a pleasure to see you, yeah, my brother. Man. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Like I was saying, man, you look all good in the eye area. Thank you, man. Skin look all good and everything. That water, H2O, man. Go ahead. H- now, now H- do you have a water company that we need to talk about? <laughs> no, I need, I need one. I need one, huh? <laughs> Cav- Caviar Dreams. That's a, my, my homie Cap one. Uh-huh. He really has his own water, bro. It's called Caviar Dreams. It's in Atlanta. He's moving really pallets of water <laughs> Fam, for real. Damn. But when I talk about multi hustling and uh, and the people <laughs> right. that I have around me, the boy pulls up to strip clubs and you know and they have all his water inside the club. So I think starting there is a good thing. And it's, and it's yeah, the man. alkaline water. Hey man, mm. do you feel like like there are no boundaries, man? Now that you, you you get in, there's certain things that we want first. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like and whatever it is, it could have been like, man, I just need to get on. Or I just want to hear such and such. Or I want to hear my song on the radio. And then yeah. now you you realize, like, man, like, there's so much more that I could do with this brand called Two Chains. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. it's not just getting in the booth and not saying that that's not, you know, 
That's, that's not uh, not anything huge. But mm-hmm. do you think like man, like man, like there's no boundaries to this. There is no ceiling to this. There is no box. I mean, no. I mean, the internet has made it to where you can look up anything, research anything. Are, Are you, you a social media yeah. guy? Um, I'm on there. It's hard not to be. I was one. I mean, it's just hard not to be. Mm-hmm. I just I, I'm gonna try to create something else that you can look at when you're looking at your phone all day. But mm-hmm. basically, see, it's it's just. Even when you do your music, you have to be conscious of even my artwork. When I did my music, I, I wanted to know how it was gonna look in a phone when you, when you looked at it in your phone. Right, the Ma- Kylie Grove artwork. Yeah, Ma- Hello. the majority of music is bought through the phone and not yeah. the not the desktop. Yeah, that's crazy. So, huh? so it's different. sometimes I get so used to looking at my phone right. that when I see it bigger, I'm like, oh damn, I should have. Well, they they they. Sure, they've psychologically made it like they've made this is this is on purpose now. It's like our Life. attention, our like Vine and, and IG has made our attention grow short. So, you know, you were saying about songs on the radio. Now, if you hear your song on IG, you're happy as hell. It's like, you know, Kylie Jenner is, is just, you know, for, to 15 seconds of your song, yeah, you yeah, can get yeah. out of here. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, like, like, big boy don't need your spin. Right, you know right, what I'm yeah, saying? Man. You That's know, true. such and such, just, you know. A Kardashian just posted 15 seconds like, of a workout. I'm good. We'll see. We don't even need to come in here no more. <laughs> yeah. I'm just coming here to speak. Well, it happens too. We've yeah. seen that. Yeah. You know yeah. Unfortunately. Yep. And thank you for actually coming in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, bro, you see me on IG? I'm good. I don't like, need to man, come in. Like, you know, like man, look, cancel look. big. Cancel nah, big. I mean, <laughs> but it's just, uh, you know, everything is just, you know, just know, just be conscious. You know, everything is, you know, is designed um, for the handheld thing. So I'm just consciously thinking of, um, you know, things to put, you know, in front of you, you know, whether, you know, app or something. But for me, I'm on I'm on Instagram, obviously. I got Snapchat, and that's kind of, that's fun. And I think Snapchat kind of, kind of cuts out the flexing a little bit. Because with IG, you can repost somebody else's picture. Yeah. You can stand in front of uh, a Bentley. Oh, man, yeah, you know, Bentley truck today. I don't yeah. know which car I dropped. Then it's like, you know, whatever. But with Snapchat, it's so live. You got to be walking. You got to mm-hmm. be in the car driving. <laughs> I love Snapchat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and man. then, you know, so. And right um, when it cut off, when it's like, sir, can you like, park the oh. car? <laughs> 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 got me, smooth got me washing the car. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Change, we in a, uh, really a political season right uh-huh. now. I mean, we, we, it, 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 it's, it's going to be either, it looked like we're going to have a first of something. How political are you, bro? Like we we're in an election year, bro. Do you pay attention to what's going on with I mean, this? I mean, it's hard and kind of not, not to. to pay attention. Yeah, you man. know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard not to pay attention. Hey, um, man, I love how you're answering the questions and Louis put right. the camera. He was like, yeah. "Peace, all right." You know, people. <laughs> let me tell you something. Just before we get back to politics, yeah. I, I play point guard. You know what I'm saying? So my <laughs> right. my peripherals. Yeah. It's on point. I can really see it. Like she ain't stopped looking at me the whole time. Right, 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 right. I used to people staring at me. You know, it's, it's hello. Cool. It's cool. She like, she like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't you know. Killing. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, yeah. You know how man we be looking at girls. I want to know what that. You know, she looking at me. I wonder. I wonder <laughs> what. I, I wonder. wonder. <laughs> Like, I wonder what's yeah. under that thing. How tall is he yeah. for real? It's, you know, six like five. Him. Right. Looking yeah. like it. But you height. did play ball. Before we get back into the politics, you did play ball. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I play, I, see, I take my skills. My skills didn't just stay where they were at. Everything that I did in my life, I took some part of it. Right. So for me, like, I it's see like, it coming. I can see you coming, man. Like, I can see you coming. You know, I can see you coming. I saw him filming. Right. It's like, <laughs> it's like so now I had to realize if I wanted to be on his snap like this or like this. It was, like, it was, on, yeah, yeah. It was on me. Yeah, don't think you get me goofy, brother. Yeah, Boom, yeah, I'm on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, so the election year is election here. year is crazy. Everybody know Trump, you know, talking. Oh, that's me. Yeah, oh, look yeah. at him. See? I don't know who that is. Go pick that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, Obama. Yeah. Hold on, Obama. Yeah, I'm talking about <laughs> it right now. <laughs> oh, 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 man, bring me a cigar back from Cuba. I'm gonna call hey. you right now. I'm Kyrie. Right. <laughs> there it is. Uh, um, um, yeah. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's, first of all, let me say, let me say this right here. I know this sounds really um, cocky, but. I still carry a little piece of cockiness too. As you it, should. It don't matter who win. My kids gonna eat. Let me say that now. Mm-hmm. Them folks, them folks at the house, mama them, they gonna eat. Right. I don't care if you come in. Look, I'm the new president. You're not gonna be. My folks gonna eat. Man, that's the main thing. I've already, you know, made sure that I'm gonna make sure my people eat. Secondly, um, moving forward, America is definitely, you know, discovering a facelift. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's hard mm-hmm. not to see. You know, it's hard not to see everything that's going on. I mean, everything is just vastly different from what it was a year ago, not yeah. just 10 years ago. I've never seen stuff change the way it changes today. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's more liberated. Everybody's more free. Mm. It's like hippie 2020, you know what I'm saying? Mixed with, you know, I don't know what's going on. So um, 
But even just in the last mm-hmm. year, we're like with with the Trumps, what right. the world is starting to feel like mm-hmm. also, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Things that's going on around the world. I mean, even now we're talking about Snapchat, Twitter, the way that yeah, we man. promote to people, the way that we talk to people. Mm-hmm. Like, what what's going to happen next year? Mm-hmm. What about, man, I don't even think what we're going to look like five well, years from now. Well, that's the thing. I think Trump is on social media. Like, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Like, like you got to, that has to be a part of your campaign. Mm. Like, tweets. Yeah, man. Have to be a part of your campaign now. Yeah, and and, and sometimes, man, when we were watching like the Republican, like when they did the debates, yeah. it almost looked like Deaf Comedy Jam the way yeah. they was going for in real, on each bro. other, brother. For real, bro. It was like if you didn't have a, somebody that could write a snap for you, then you was <laughs> you, you wasn't gonna get in, Jack. Believe it. Do yeah, do you man. vote, change? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, my 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 voting. I restored my voting. I be, I came. I became a felon when I was fifteen. Mm. Um, but it was from drugs and not violence. So in Georgia, when you don't have a violent, or if you're not on parole or probation or have a violent felony, you can vote again. So my first time was vote, voting was for Obama. Obama, hell You know what I'm saying? So I, you know. You so did, I got is that my when little, you made sure? You know, I, I, was I got like, my man, little okay. sticker. I had put the little, you know, I voted. We got a little vote yeah. stickers, you know what I'm saying? I rocked that day. Went to the studio with my little sticker <laughs> on. God, hey, hey, man, man you notice when you do the I voted and you walk around with that all day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to even make sure. Do you, you ever press it back like, man, it's not really sticking yeah, on the sweater Yeah, it's not sticking right on right no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Or you got the homie, you like, man, your ass didn't vote. <laughs> yeah. Got this I voted sticker on. You know, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? All righty, man. Yeah. Two chains. Definitely want to thank yeah, you for man. coming thank in, man. It's a pleasure. Once again, Collie Grove available for you right now. Thank you for dropping in, Yes, man. And y'all really did it, though. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Two chains. Change Lil Wayne. The Thank album is God. now out. If you have the internet, you have access to this album. It's called Kali Grove. No, it's not a mixtape, y'all. Go ahead it's now. An album. album. It's mixed, Check mastered, out. a lot of time, thought, the no whole throwaways. Process. Yeah, but we do have some throwaways, and you'll be getting to hear those real soon too. Go ahead so now. I, I appreciate the love. Double salute. You know what I'm saying? West Coast, LA. You know what it is. I appreciate you. Two chains. Hello, <laughs> big boys neighborhood, big boy. y'all.